me again, doing a little bit of political ranting, but not so much ranting, more question asking. So I just came from the panel unveiling downtown Woodstock. We had um, we have this pocket park, and there are premier panels, and they commemorate the premiers from our region, um, and uh, basically talk about their legacy and what they accomplished and. Um, the years that they were in and there's some nice photos and David Allward was honored today and so the gathering brought together an awful lot of po former politicians and politicians that are in the house now so there was David Allward, uh, Dale Graham which is the former speaker of the house was there, um, Andrew Harvey, Stuart Fairgrave, uh, Carl Urquhart, TJ Harvey, Dominic Cardi was there and conversations um, went to the obvious, which is what's happening on the political landscape in New Brunswick now, which is nothing, slash waiting for somebody to figure out who's going to be the Speaker of the House. And that got me thinking. Back in the early 1990s, when I lived in Nova Scotia, um, Premier Donald Cameron appointed two women to his cabinet who were not elected. And the Premier has that... Um, has that option. They can pick anybody they want for their cabinet. Now, I'm pretty sure they weren't allowed in the House because they didn't have a vote because they weren't elected. So that got me thinking. And one of them actually was a, a friend of mine, Debbie Forsyth Smith. And I was really sad when she didn't win because I think she would have been an amazing um, person, a politician who could have helped Nova Scotia. Uh, powerhouse, smart, savvy, kind, thoughtful, um, hardworking, she would have made a difference. But I digress. So that situation, though, got me thinking that if a premier is allowed to appoint somebody to cabinet from outside who is not elected, but yet they can't have a vote in the House, why couldn't we do that with the Speaker? And is it possible to do that? And that's my question is... Is there any kind of leeway within the laws that allow us, or them, to appoint a speaker? Because if there is, it would be smart of Mr. Gallant to sit down with Mr. Higgs and come up with a name that they both wanted. Because essentially, all the speaker does is keep, while it's important though, they keep the rules, they make them behave, they they cut through the crap and stop people from being mean to each other, basically. So I'm thinking, hey, shout out to my friend Heather Hogan, <laughs> who is a retired, um, I believe, vice principal. I don't think she was principal. I can't remember now. Sorry, Heather. But she was an elementary school teacher for a lot of years. And if she can control a group of kindergarten, grade one, grade two students... I think that is the kind of skill we need, sadly, um, to wrangle politicians. If you can keep order in a grade two classroom, hey, I think you should be in Fredericton keeping order in our house. So here's the question. Is there somewhere in our legislative rules, policies, legislation that allows for the appointment of a speaker? Because if they can't vote, they are essentially a referee. And why can't we have a referee that's from outside? I teased Dale Graham and said, do you want your old job back? And he just laughed. So we know he's not interested. But I bet you there would be quite a few people out there that could do the job and do the job well. So yeah, throwing it out there. Because you know what? People need to get back to work. And we need to get past this and find a way. Figure a way. Get past it. And let's get back to work. Okay? Because everything right now is kind of in this safety weird kind of stagnant mode where you can't really make any decisions because we're not back to work. The government isn't functioning. Okay? All right. So yeah, that's my little question slash not really a rant for today. See ya.